Hello Booktube, um, this is uh, a tag video uh, for Tag Tuesday and it is the 10 Odd Weird Bookish Questions book tag and it is by Sean D. Stanfast, it was an original tag and he was very kind and uh, tagged me on it and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, so let's just jump right in. Uh, where was the oddest place you purchased a book from and was it a keeper? Um, I think, I don't know how, how odd it is, it's not what you'd normally do, I bought, um, and I think you used to be able to do this a little more often in the past, uh, maybe not, um, a gas station, before they were, you know, had little markets in them, back when it was just a gas station, and uh, you had a little office where you go pay or whatever, there was a rack, there was a spinner rack, and it had uh, paperbacks, and I think I bought a... Uh, some of you remember the old Matt Helm thrillers, little paperbacks, and, and uh, yeah, it was it was a good story. I didn't keep it. I, I probably did actually for a while, but um, I don't have it anymore. Number two, have you read a book in public that had a title which can be interpreted in a different way and got strange looks? Um, no, I. I, d I don't know if I read, well, I read in public now because, of course, I'm a librarian. I read at the library. It's part of my job. But um, I don't, I live in a rural area, and I've lived many places around the United States, um, but I've never really been one to take, like, public transportation. Um, I've never been quite in that position. Um yeah, no, I, I don't think I have, so, so I don't, I don't think that, uh, I think that if you were, if you had a commute and you were on a train or a bus or something like that, or that, that would be more likely to happen to me. It's just not something that comes up in my daily life. Number three, what strange and wonderful things have you found in a used or new book? Um, I've found the, the common things for me to find, of course, are old bookmarks, old business cards, used to be the stubs from boarding passes for airlines, I don't see those much anymore. Um, I have found money, um, photographs, a couple of which over the years have raised my Spock-like eyebrows. <laughs> Like, why was that put in a book and why did you take this picture? So, yeah, I think the strangest things are sometimes the pictures. Sometimes the pictures are wonderful. I remember once, and I got it somewhere. I wish I knew where I had it. I probably have it in a box somewhere. It was a picture, and it was really sort of yellowish, but it was um, a man standing in front of the biggest collection, private collection, I'm assuming, of... Native American artifacts, mostly arrowheads and stuff, that I have ever seen. And I, no, don't forget, I trained as an archaeologist, and I trained in North America. And, I mean, this guy's collection was stunning. So I, I, I don't know where that came from. I mean, it was in the book, and uh, but, but I would think that would be a loss to somebody. They'd want to have that, right? Uh, number four, is smelling a book weird? to you or a normal part of your book buying reading? Well, it should be a part of your book buying if you buy used books like I do. Um, you can learn a lot by how a book smells. Um, and, you know, mustiness. Um, it, there's all sorts of things you can tell. And sometimes you'll be like, hey, no, I don't want this. This is gross. Um, for a new book, it happened to me. I still have the book. And I think it's the ink or some chemical they use in a glue. And that's um, Kenneth Clark's art history, The Nude. And it's a Folio Society book. And it has tons and tons of incredible reproductions of old artwork. And the strangest smell, it's just, it's a put-off. But it, it's its a beautiful book. I just don't remember. It's still, I think I've had it for years. And it's still, you open it, it's like, what is it? It's a real chemical type smell. And I bought it brand new. So I, I thought it would go away after a while. It, it just hasn't. I don't, I don't know what they used or what happened. Number five, do you have any odd, weird, book-buying, reading, collecting habits? 
Um, so when I book buy and when I um, collect, I don't think they're weird from my perspective. Um, I'm not disciplined enough. I mean, there's only, only so much room in the house, so I have separate collections everywhere. Uh, the thing collecting is to get focused, and I'm not very focused. Um, but I, I, I have what I like. Um, so, uh, no, I, I don't think I do. Now, number six. What is the oddest comment you, re uh, you received after telling someone you're a book collector or reader? Well, a common one, of course, is when they come to my house, they say, have you read all these? And uh, I think it was Umberto Eco who once said, <laughs> He says, no, 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 I haven't. The ones I've read are all in warehouses or something, you know, because he's trying to put the person on. But um, I do get that. Um, and then why do you have the book if you've already read it? So a lot of people don't, don't understand it. Um, I get less of that because I'm a librarian, I think, than I got when I wasn't a librarian. So, um, yeah, that, that's the thing I get is, that, have you read all these? And, and no, I have not read all these. And I would be mortified if I had, because that means I'm not buying them fast enough. Okay. Um, number seven, describe a strange encounter at a bookshop, either a bookseller or a customer. This is a little awkward. It was in New Mexico, and uh, I was... Uh, it was a used bookstore, and one of those ones that random piles everywhere, just a thing I like. There's just shelves you couldn't even reach half the stuff, and there's just stuff jam-packed every square inch. And when you went on the stairs, I'm sure their insurance agent would love to see this. You could barely get down them because there's books on the stairs. And um, I walked down, and there was a uh, romantic encounter at the bottom of the in the room downstairs, and I, uh, I backed out quickly. It was uh, I left the store. I mean, it's just not the sort of thing you expect to have to deal with when you're there book shopping. So um, that that was, yeah. I never went back there. I just it was an odd an odd odd moment in my life. Um, may have been odder in theirs to have some some old guy come wandering down. I wasn't old then. I was younger. All right. Um, number eight. Is it weird to pass a bookshop when you are out and not enter? Um, not always. I mean, I, I mean, you know, a lot of times, uh, like today I went into a books a million. Uh, I had to kill a little bit of time and, um, I was looking at some magazines and stuff, but there's been many times I've passed it and not gone in. So, uh, no, no, I don't always have to go into the bookstore. Uh, number nine, are you drawn to weird or odd little dingy out of the way bookshops or do you prefer tidy shops? I prefer shops that have character. I do like it if it looks like somebody's put a lot of care into them. I've been into some dingy, dingy little bookshops. And I've been into some dingy big bookshops. Um, I've been into bookshops that were in barns and old houses and strip malls all over the place. And they each can have their own character and, and, and you know it when you're in one that does. But I like to be able to find what I'm looking for, at least if they get a general idea, you know. So if I'm in there looking for science fiction, it'd be nice, if, even if it's not in perfect order, if it was in the general vicinity. Um, if I'm looking for history, that sort of thing. So I like some sort of organizations. And number 10, books can come in odd shapes and sizes. What is the oddest shaped book you've ever come across? I've had them shaped like a baseball. And a football, actually. I've had them shaped, uh, let me see. Had one shaped like a lunchbox. The, the handle was cut into it. It was sort of weird. Uh, neat, though. Um, I've seen quite a few that are, yeah, mostly it's shapes like, you know, a sunflower or, you know, something like that. Um, I'm not a fan of them. Um, they're hard, hard to shelf and... And, and, and you, you know, I, I don't keep anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I've, well, I've got a history of the Coast Guard that has a 
actual metal on the front of it. And it's a wonderful book, big old oversized thing. And it's a bear. It's, it's almost has to sit on its own because it doesn't slide in the shelf without damage and something. So, um, so I would say that that was probably the, the one of the drawbacks of that. So it, now I'm supposed to tag some people. I'll tag Ernestly Eston, uh, Remembered Reads. Uh, if we read it, we must converse. Noah, I always mess up your channel name, but you know who you are, Noah. And everybody else should too. It's a wonderful channel. Um, Steve Donahue, I don't. I know Sean already, already got him and uh, Jason at Byways and Bookland. Um, Motley Reads, if you'd like to do it, love to love to see it. And uh, and uh, definitely our uh, um, Todd's Bursting Bookcase and Todd the Librarian. So I'm throwing out a few just right off the top of my head. So I should have should have uh, written down some, but I didn't. So this was a good tag. Um, some of the questions are a little awkward, <laughs> yeah, but that's what makes it fun, right? So I hope you're all doing well. Um, and uh, Sean, Sean D. Stanfast, thank you very much. Great tag. So thank you.